Good morning, everyone. Happy Tuesday. Um, I hope everybody is doing well. Um, my name is Denise Wordsong, and I teach photographers how to coach and direct with, with precision and intention for beautiful emotive work. Um, and here in our stripped down group, we talk an awful lot about um, being the best that we can possibly be for ourselves and for our clients. And one of the ways we're going to do that today is we are going to, to check out some of Ellen Von Unworth's work um, and be inspired by her. Um, she's one of my absolute favorite photographers. Good morning, everybody. Um, She's one of my favorite photographers. So we're going to talk a little bit about Ellen, um, her history, and then we're going to, well, we'll be looking at her work as we're doing it as well. Um, so I'm excited to go through this with you guys. Hi, everybody in the chat. Good morning, y'all. Um, so it would be awesome if, yes, if you are not signed up through Restream, um, if you put in the chat, like, who it is I'm speaking to because if you're not signed up through ring then i can't tell um i am going to ask lee to drop a link for us sorry guys it's i'm paying attention i just have two screens and so i'm looking at the other screen as you guys are chatting me um i'm going to ask lee to drop a link in here in case you do want to sign up for restream i'm going to be coming on every single tuesday um unless i'm traveling for work I might even come on that, but basically I'll be here every Tuesday. And so if you're going to be here and you're going to be participating um, in these coffee talks. Which I hope that you do. I love the participation. Um, I'm not real crazy about talking at people, but I really love engaging and talking with people. Um, so it'd be awesome if you all signed up. That would be great. Um, hey, Kaylee. Good morning, Sierra. Hi, Sid. Yes, Ellen is awesome. Good morning, Amber, and good morning, Katie. And thank you, Lee dropped out in there. So we're going to be here every Tuesday covering some topic or another that's going to help us grow and continue us on our growth journey um, and get us to a place where we can become the best possible artist possible. Um, that was a great sentence. Okay, so so with that, um, do me a favor. If you're catching this on a replay, hit type in replay for me. Um, it helps me get it to more people, but it also helps me know when people are watching, um, which is important because we might change the times based on when people are able to engage. Um, and with that, let's go ahead and dive into this. Good morning, Wanda. So I'm going to go ahead and share my screen with you guys. And here we go. So for those of you who don't know who Ellen Von Unwer and actually, if you can in the chat for me, how many of you are familiar with Ellen and how many of you, this is the first time you've heard her name? I'm, I'm curious. And I know that there's a little bit of a lag, so I'm going to wait. My hair feels like terrible compared to Claudia's. Hmm. Am I missing my blonde hair a little bit? Maybe. Maybe not. Okay. Chelsea loves Ellen. Um, oh, Wanda, yay, this is your first time. That's so exciting for me that this is your first time. I'm super excited to introduce you to Ellen Von Unworth. Um, Tiffany, it's her first time as well. I bet you that you guys know who she is. You're going to, you might not know the name, but once you start, start seeing the work, you're going to be like, oh my God. Yeah. I totally know this photographer. Um, Michelle loves her. Amber thinks she's a breath of fresh air. Kaylee loves her. Okay, so we've got a mix. We've got some people who know her and some people who don't. And I think it's important as artists, like in my stripped down class, we actually went through art hit, we go through our art history module um, where we really like dive into the history of art and then, you know, kind of ascertain how relatable to our work and how we can learn from the great masters that came before us to step into our own fullness as artists. So we're going to do that today with Ellen. And I think we're going to do this on a fairly regular basis. We're going to check out artists and photographers so that we can start drawing inspiration from places outside of our industry and, and be inspired and want to work um, more creatively and more fully and with precision and intention and 
instead of kind of haphazardly as we do oftentimes. Um, thank you, Tiffany. I like the dark hair too. <laughs> and my blonde roots are starting to show I'm guy need to get to the salon. Okay. But anyways, let's go on to Ellen. So this is a very iconic um, photo created by Ellen and Claudia Schiffer. And um, it really kind of, it really kind of catapulted Ellen into the, the fashion photography industry. This was a guest campaign that Ellen worked on. So let's go ahead and dive right in. So I would like to present to you Ellen Von Unworth. Um, she is such an amazing inspiration, such a beautiful artist. She is just absolutely phenomenal. So let's dive into her work. So my first encounter with Ellen was when I was a young girl and she did this guest campaign with Claudia Schiffer. I'm curious how many of you actually saw this campaign um, when, when it was going on um, or have seen it since. Ooh, it looks like my internet is lagging. Someone tell me if you guys are having trouble with my internet. Okay, awesome. So someone has seen it. Is the restream coming through okay? The internet is lagging. Okay, let's cross our fingers that it stays okay-ish. Okay, this was my first experience with Ellen. And as a young girl, um, you know, I got every fashion magazine. I probably had like, you know, 16, 17 subscriptions, European fashion magazines, all of the like offshoot and more like your typicals. Like I loved I've always loved photography. I'm, I've always loved art. I've always loved imagery. And this hit the scene and I was like, holy shit, like, what is this? This is so different from anything else that I've seen. And so I started tearing pages and eventually like I had one whole wall that was covered in, you know, fashion magazine pages. Um, and ironically, the majority of the work was actually Ellen's. I didn't know it at the time, but it was. So I've been completely enthralled with her work since I was little. Like I said, I covered my bedroom walls in so many of her campaigns. And I was completely oblivious that it was the same person that was creating this work that I was so incredibly obsessed with. And there was just, oh my God, there was something about her work um, and even her videos. I didn't know they were her videos at the time. I later found out that they were. Um, she did Duran Duran's Femme Fatale and Duran Duran's Electric Barbarella. She shot most of the touring images for Duran Duran. Um, she did a lot of their cover art. I mean, yeah. And I was obsessed with all of it. And again, not knowing that it was her, but knowing there was something about this work that, man, it was amazing. It just completely pulled me in. It was so gorgeous, like completely decadent, super emotionally charged in like a really multifaceted kind of way. Um, and to this day, I'm still completely enthralled. Like her work has not let me go. She has done this magical thing. Um, when you see an Ellen photo, you know it's Ellen's photos, period, end of story. Like once you know, you know. There's no mistaking. Um, and yes, Amber, she did that. She did that video. She's done a ton of videos. Actually, if you guys head to Vimeo and you look for Ellen Von Unworth, she's actually directed a lot of her own videos. Um, so for four campaigns and some of it personal projects. And so if you want a complete treat, um, head over to Vimeo and check out her, all of her, her archive there. Um, she also has, um, if you just do a Google search for videos that Ellen's done, Duran Duran's not the only um, artist that are artists that she has worked with in creating um, music videos for. I think she did something with Christina Aguilera, I think, and there are a couple of other artists that she did videos for as well. But anyways, she has this way 
of portraying her subjects as like completely glamorous, but then there's still like some kind of like parody and humor to it. Um, it's it's always very sexual. Um, there's some eroticism and again, everything is just like really multifaceted in her work and it's just beautiful. This image that we're looking at right here, this did happen. Ellen works very intentionally with her with her subjects and even though they are models and I've actually seen her work, um, not in person, I wish, uh, but like behind the scenes and some she just lets the models be free and kind of give loose directions and have them move and their models so they can do it a little bit easier than our clients do. And then sometimes she's very, just very intentional and precise about the way that her models are interacting, her subjects are interacting because she is absolutely looking to create images intentionally that have a ton of feeling in them. And there's a reason for it. And we're going to get to that and we're going to learn from it. Um, okay. So what an image, right? Like <laughs> take your breath away kind of stuff. It's so good. It's so irreverent. It is so much fun. And as boudoir photographers or portrait photographers, are we going to be able to shoot this for clients? No, but can we do personal projects fun or like take some elements of this that are kind of fun and bring it into our work? Yes, we can. And can we recognize that she is intentionally working to create a ton of emotion in her work? Yes, and this is what makes her such a standout artist and someone that we should be watching and following so that we can learn things from her. So Ellen's iconic work carves a really fine line between sensuality and just pure, unrated fun. I mean, this chick really knows how to have a good time. And the imagery that she creates teases the subject as well as the viewer. And there is no doubt that she makes you take notice and feel her work. like no doubt about it. That's what she's doing. So in terms of fashion photography, her work is really lacking in that like kind of contrived state that we so often experience in fashion editorial work. And she brings to the table a really unconventional and incredibly refreshing take on sexuality that I have never, ever seen it cross the line of objectification, which is as much as she shoots sex and as much as she shoots women, the fact that I've never seen a crossover to objectification is bananas. It's just bonkers. There are so many other photographers that I love and adore who I have seen cross that line. Um, I've never seen that happen with Ellen's work ever. So she beautifully, beautifully depicts the emotional and magical worlds of her subjects um, and the worlds that they inhabit. And she does it with like so much power. The women are always in so much, even if they're in like bondage, like if they are in an incredibly submissive position, you still know that they're in control. You, you can feel it. Like it's, everybody is just owning everything and it's, <clears throat> it's so good. Um, there's a lot of strength, a lot of femininity, and there is some exaggerated parody, um, which makes it fun um, oftentimes. So among so many other things that I love, um, Ellen's a proclaimed feminist and believes that photography should always provoke a reaction and be charged with a physical presence. Oh my God. Amen. It's so nice to hear that. It's what I've been preaching for the longest time. And like when I did research on Ellen and when I read about Ellen and I, it's just, it, it's so good to hear another female photographer who is such a giant within the industry, really pushing the boundaries and saying such things so she really enjoys portraying women and absolutely without apology like and you will see and you know quite frankly 99.9 percent .9 of ellen's work i wasn't able to show you today because i don't want to get in trouble with facebook i mean i just don't and i highly suggest that you go and do like google image searches for her work because you are going to see a lot of really provocative, beautifully executed, amazing work that I couldn't share because of, you know, the Facebook box. So 
but we're still going to see some beautiful work. It's okay. So, um, so Ellen truly enjoys portraying women without apology. And that's something that we are photographers can absolutely be inspired by. In my stripped down class, I really work hard to get photographers to a place where they can coach and direct for emotive states. And you have to become very vulnerable yourself to do that. And you have to understand that there's no reason to be apologetic about our femininity or our sexuality or any of the things that we feel. It's okay to be who you are. And and that's a journey as photographers that we have to go on. So we're shooting boudoir photography. If we want to get our clients to that place, we have to be in that place ourselves. So from Ellen's work, we can see that she's totally in that place and she has no problem getting her subjects to this place. I mean, this image, are you kidding me right now? This is like, there's so much power and strength in this. It's so amazing. And it is completely unapologetic. Like, they're all about the sex here. Like this is a ton of eroticism and nobody's making any excuses for it or being ashamed or shy. There's no sense of it being wrong. It's like there wasn't even a garden of Eden. You know what I mean? Um, so Ellen says, I think it's more interesting that a photograph provokes something inside us and makes us remember it. Have you heard someone say that before? Maybe, I don't know. Your girl is like constantly saying this. Um, so it's so much more important to create provocative, beautiful work that tells the like wondrous inner stories of our subjects than just taking pretty pictures. Blah, anybody can do that. Anybody with a phone can freaking do that. Um, so she wants to create images that aren't forgettable. And she says the women that I portray are in control. And this is something that we need to be able to give to our clients. Again, we can learn from Ellen in this. So let's talk a little bit about her and how she came to be. Um, so she grew up actually in an orphanage, um, where she had to be strong and make her own way. Um, she actually left the or orphanage. Uh, she was in Frank Frankfurt. She left the orphanage um, and went into like this hippie commune um, a couple of hours out of Frankfurt up in the hills in Germany. Um, and it was, it was just like, from what I've read, it sounds like it was just absolute bohemia. It sounds amazing. And she came back to Frank. She even joined a circus for a little while in her teens. Um, and she said it filled me with a lifetime of inspiration. And she says of her time with the circus, Ron Cully. Um, I use it often in my stories, the performers, the light it's the mystery, the surrealism, everything really. So that's a big part of what shaped her. Um, we don't have to come from backgrounds of being circus performers or living in hippie communes or being orphans um, to be able to get to this place. But this did kind of shape her and we can learn from it. So at 18, she was scouted by a modeling agency in Munich. Um, and then that ended up with her being signed with elite models in Paris. Um, and today she admits to not feeling any real affinity to the craft. So she wasn't really crazy about modeling. Um, um, you know, I've read, I've read articles with her where she said that she didn't like other people controlling her image or she felt like that she wasn't truly able to express herself. And I think she was a little disenfranchised with being a model. But what it did do, however, was introduce her to the seductive world of fashion, which is something that she totally loves. Um, and she says, I'm not really an exhibitionist. Um, being a creative suited me more. Um, I remember being on set and being ordered to not move for hours and hours in the cold wearing only a bikini. I was never asked to express myself or to have fun. Now, when I'm on set, I always ask the models to live, to have fun and to Emperor. And so again, that's something that that is very similar to a lot of the things that I teach in Strip Down. Um, because we're not working with models, because we're actually working with clients, we can't say something as simple as like live and have fun because you know they're scared and nervous. They're not professional models. But we can guide and direct them into like those 
beautiful emotive states and those gorgeous, like wondrous inner worlds that they have and capture those for them and with them and, and guide them through it. Um, and again, seeing Ellen work, I've seen her do this as well. So here we can look at some of her beautiful, beautiful, irreverent and absolutely gorgeous work. Some of it is fashion editorial work that she's done that she was commissioned to do. Some of it is personal projects. And so we're going to see less personal projects because those are a little bit more risque and not Facebook friendly. Um, but yeah, it's like so to be inspired by. And I want you guys to start taking note of like the styling. You're always going to know an Ellen's work from a couple of things. Like she has a very distinctive style in terms of the way the models are styled. I'm certain that she has a hand in every campaign that she works in. And I believe that like the fashion houses um, or the people running the campaigns will, will choose Ellen because they want kind of her signature style. Um, it's always with the big hairs with like the Vixen, unless she's doing like a twenties themed kind of something. And then it's more flapperish, but it's always like incredibly glamorous, like extremely exaggerated over the top femininity, um, when the work color work, it is color work. I mean, her colors are crazy and vibrant and beautiful. And when it's black and white work, it's like super contrasty and just like, oh, she's always looking to add like more elements with the way that she edits um, and also the way that she styles beautiful, right? Like just crazy. Oops, we've got a slip. So I'm moving on. So, okay. 1986, she started picking up the camera herself after a boyfriend left her one while she was modeling, while she was on a modeling assignment in Kenya. And in the decades since, Ellen has created some of the most arresting fashion images of our area and helped members of the supers like Claudia Schiffer and and Natalie and Kate Moss. And she was actually the first to photograph Moss in the pages of Vogue. So, I mean, she's really incredibly iconic and launched a lot of careers with her incredible work. Um, and Ellen says that I love to, to discover new girls. She says some become huge stars and others disappear in a couple months, but she really loves working with new girls and kind of pulling everything out of them that she can and capturing all of that beauty again, which is something that we do as boudoir photographers. So has managed to carve her own path. And she says, you should never be afraid of embracing who you are or to be brave and take risks. And I wouldn't be here if I didn't try photography after a decade of modeling and decide to make it my own way. So men dominated the industry for a very long time, but I felt that it was time and that things were changing. So when Ellen moved into photographing, she was again, disenfranchised with modeling and really just wanted to make her own way and start creating in a way that she wanted to, giving the female subjects that she was working with the power to express themselves and explore all of those things inside of themselves and not be ashamed and not make apologies for any of it. Another amazing image that Ellen shot of Claudia. We'll actually talk about this campaign in a little bit. And some more of her gorgeous work. And, and you see like, oh my God, the, the strength in, in their femininity. And again, the lack of shame, um, the absolute acceptance of who they are and some parody in the work and some fun and just a ton of life. I'm curious, how many of you have actually seen these images that I'm showing you? Let me know in the comments or what you guys are actually thinking of the photographer and her work. I'm going to keep going as you do that. Okay, so having unveiled her own fashion magazine, and yes, she has her own fashion magazine, and yes, I have all of the issues of it, and I would highly suggest that you guys get this well, um, and her first solo exhibit in Sweden, um, Von Unworth 
also launched her latest exhibit, which called Ladyland, allowed her to showcase 30 of her most iconic photographs and among them a sizzling shot of Claudia in Morocco. And Ellen says, I like the idea that Ladyland is more of a geographical term than a description. And I thought this was really interesting, you guys. She said, it gives me the feeling that my artistic universe is a place where women can be themselves, free, beautiful, and incredible. It's both a physical place and a mental one as well. If this doesn't relate to everything that I've been trying to teach you, I mean, I don't know what does. And I hope this is like ringing some bells and like getting you guys excited excited um because we can get out there and we can do the same work we just learn how to let go of our inhibitions um let go of all of the shame around female sexuality um and be okay with it and be unapologetic you guys you are photographers this is exactly what we're supposed to be doing but i know so many of us are still held back by things that we're struggling with personally, but our clients should have the benefit of us being open and able and willing to go places with them. So um, I'm just going to go through the comments really quick before I keep going and see if I missed anything. So let's see. Amber says, oh my gosh, she did videos. Uh, okay. She's going to watch them. Yes. Let's go watch them for sure. Um, I know this is, it really is quite beautiful work. It's a lot of production that goes into her work. This isn't something that we get to do in our studios, right? I mean, these are paid models. We've got big budgets. We've got stylists who are involved. Like we've got sets and locations. There's a lot going on. And I, so I don't want you guys to think this is the kind of work that you have to go and create. We don't have these kind of budgets and our clients aren't necessarily looking for this. And if you want to do personal projects and team up with um, with a stylist um, or with vendors who will help you do something like this, then by all means do it. There are some elements from this, though, that we do need to take and be inspired by um, and start exploring in our own work. And it's always that push the boundary a little bit and that exploration that's going to help us grow. Um, I know my work doesn't look like this because I don't have the professional models that Ellen has. I don't have the wardrobe that she has. I don't have the budget that she has for, for her shoots. And I don't have the locations and all of this stuff. But I do absolutely push my boundaries um, and and push the boundaries of my clients so much as what, and, and it's good for them. Um, I don't ever want to push too far. Um, to be able to be so unapologetic and really like embrace all of our femininity and create just gorgeous images. Um, so Adrian said, Adriana says her words are spot on. That's the same way I feel about anything that doesn't let me express myself. Mm -hmm. um, Adriana says she's seen some of them. Um, someone says that they have not seen them, but they're excited to learn more. Amber, we've seen a couple, um, never heard of her, but we'll be checking her out. Fantastic. Um, someone else says I'm bouncing back and forth from Google images of hers and yours. Yeah. Okay, cool. Um, just wanted to say thank you for finding a female photographer to present to us. Totally love seeing all of this sexy, powerful imagery, especially from a badass lady, Andrea. Yeah. I mean, Again, you guys, there's such a cultural difference between growing up, I believe, in like, especially like Frank and, and being in the Berlin scene and in and around Germany. There's such a huge cultural difference with the way that sex and sexuality is viewed there and the puritanical way that it's viewed here in the States. Um, and I think that, you know, you might be seeing a little bit of disconnect because of that. We were all raised very differently than the environment that Ellen grew up in, but that doesn't mean we're just stuck in what we've learned. We can push past that and we can get to a point where we understand that femininity and sexuality is not something to be ashamed of. It's actually something to be embraced. Again, we're boudoir photographers. That's kind of what we're doing. So I talked a little bit about Ellen's magazine, Vaughn, that she started producing. And <clears throat> 
you can go and find that magazine. And if you want to be really inspired, I suggest you pick those magazines up. They're a little bit pricey, but they are, in my opinion, well worth it. Um, so these are some of the covers from her work um, on Vaughn magazine. And you guys look at all of the emotion in them. They're just like, not a single one of them is devoid of emotion. They're None of them are just, they're beautiful, evocative images that like stop you dead in your tracks, which is what we all want to create and make you pay attention. You don't have have a choice. They draw you. They're absolutely phenomenal. Is some of it styling? Yes. Um, is some of it working with precision and intention? Absolutely. Is a ton of it just embracing femininity, femininity and sexuality and all of the emotive states? 100%. Okay. So now we're going to talk about Ellen's styling because this is a big part of what she does. And again, I said earlier, her work is very, um, once you know, uh, you're going to know it. Every time you see an Ellen image, you're going to be like, that's Ellen. Um, because it is so like signature style. I mean, we've looked at so many images. This is Kylie Minogue. She shot Kylie Minogue for a magazine. And I mean, the signature, you know, she always likes to be cheeky and have that camera in a lot of the shots. The whole Bardo-esque kind of look, I think to her, that was like one of the pinnacles of femininity. So we see that kind of styling in a lot of her work. The point is she takes control of a lot of the styling in her work. Um, she takes control of a lot of the wardrobe, the hair, the makeup, um, the sets, the colors, the edits. Like there is a lot of precision and intention in her working that's not just directing her emotions, but it's also controlling all of the other things that will create like emotive feels within the work. Um, and oh my God, such a cute, such a cute campaign she did with, with Kylie Minogue. It's so playful and so darling. I mean, this is so flirtatious and cute and that's what we want to do. We don't want to take those pretty pictures. We want to take images that are full of the emotion. And here's some more of the images from that spread with Kylie. Um, I had not seen this before I did this research, but I do have some photos that I took of a high school teenager um, where I kind of did the same thing. I had her screaming in a phone like that. It was really fun and emotive. Mm -hmm. If you guys haven't seen that and you do want to see it, let me know and I'll link it up in the group. See um, what I did. I was trying to depict a teenage girl the way a teenage girl actually is as opposed to like the high school senior sessions that we always see it was something that her and her mom requested of me and it was a tremendous amount of fun um so we've got all of the gorgeous colors we've got the beautiful styling and every single one of these photos is not just a pretty picture it's absolutely full of emotion and ellen is controlling what is happening and it's it's gorgeous she's working with precision and intention um, and embracing all of the different emotive states of subjects that she's working with. And here we have her working with Lana um, for another editorial that she did. I don't think I've ever quite seen photos like this of Lana, and I've seen a lot of beautiful photos of Lana, but I don't think anyone ever captured her as beautifully as Ellen did or got as much emotion out of Lana. Lana is usually very kind of like pulled together. Um, and in this, Lana is definitely having fun. Definitely having fun. Um, this is rather overtly sexual, I would say. Again, not something we normally see of Lana, but absolutely beautiful. Another campaign that she did um, that is just, again, darling, we're going through a range of emotions. Um, if you notice, the female is absolutely in control of her sexuality. This could have so easily tipped over into something that was like objectification 
vacation, you know, um, we've got the, you know, she's standing there and we've got a mechanic who's like reaching up for her. But instead of her being like, oh, I'm such a sweet girl. You shouldn't. She's got like the glasses up and she's like, what are you doing, motherfucker? Right. You know, she's like, she's in control. Again, here, she's got the legs open, the leg up in here. He's got an air hose and she got a sign right there saying, mm -mm, do not enter. Like, I'm in control of this. Um, this leaning back with the hips thrust forward and the hands on the hips, there's so much confidence in it. And this pleasure pose right here is just absolutely gorgeous as well. It's just another beautiful example of how well she actually does this and allows her females to control their own femininity and sexuality without any, you know, shame. So for Guess's 30 year anniversary, um, they brought Ellen and Claudia back together for a 30 year anniversary campaign. And these women are magical. It's just magical together. The campaign she did with Claudia when Claudia was a young girl for Guess was beautiful. And this 30 year anniversary campaign was bananas. If you want to, again, go do some more looking. Um, searching the 30 year anniversary campaign with Ellen Von Unwith and Claudia Schiffer is definitely something to go give a look at. It's gorgeous. It's a more, it's a more refined Claudia. Um, but still even a woman in her mid to late forties owning her sexuality and just being amazing. Um, I think it's kind of hard not to be amazing when you're Claudia Schiffer though. <laughs> but beautiful and fun, playful, sexy images. This right here is such a beautiful example of like coy flirtation. It is like giving the pretense of being shy with the intention of being alluring. Um, there's nothing demure about her. She might be looking like she's demure, but she's doing it intentionally because she's owning it. The the purpose is to be completely alluring. Um, and again, Ellen did an amazing job capturing the essence of, of Claudia. So Ellen is not confined to just shooting women. She has shot a lot, a lot of men and done a f she does a phenomenal job of shooting men as well. Um, if you do a Google search of Ellen shooting men or, you know, men by Ellen Von Unworth, Christian Bale comes to mind because I love him so much. And she did such a phenomenal job capturing him um, and capturing masculinity and the sexuality of men as well as the tender sides of them. Oh, she does it beautifully. She, she shoots men, but when she shoots men, it's out of this world. So that's another thing that you guys can go and check out on your own. For the purpose of this presentation, I didn't want to keep you guys on for 10 hours. I totally could keep you on for 10 hours talking about Ellen. I love her that much, um, but I want to be respectful of your guys' time. So another thing to go and search. Mm. This. Okay, so this was a campaign by a large uh, company in the fashion world, and they hired Ellen to shoot it. I'd like to see in the comments if anyone can guess who this brand might be. You guys are going to be blown away when you when I tell you who this brand is. I'm going to, I'm going to go ahead and sit still for a second and I'm going to wait for some guesses on what this brand might be, who she might shot, who she might have shot this for. And while I'm doing that, Andreas, I really, how much, I really love how much power she gives women with their sexuality. It makes me think a lot about one of my college classes on the male gaze. She's just totally shutting that down. I'm in love. I know me too. Um, Andrea also said, I just wanted to thank you for finding a female photographer. Okay, good. Okay. So Adriana says, I think it's a makeup brand. Uh, Chelsea says Versace or Versace. Um, the top right photo, um, very similar. 
I'm curious, uh, Adriana, why you think it's a makeup brand? Okay, someone said Mac. Michelle said Mac. That's interesting. Okay, there are 24 of us on here. I want more people typing. Someone says it might be a clothing brand. I'm really, I'm pretty sure I'm going to blow you guys away when I get this. I want three more responses and then I'll let you guys know who it is. Type, type, type. Come on, engage with me. Because of bold makeup, but I remember that makeup um, is done more close up usually. That's really good. Adriana, cool. Chanel, perfume. I don't know, fashion, hair product, Steve. Madden, guess. Are you guys ready for this? The most, one of the most boring. Okay, we see, I'm seeing a lot of guests. One of the most, in my opinion, one of the safest and most boring companies with like, yeah, right, Target. Close, Target is damn close. It's for L'Oreal. Have you guys ever seen any kind of ad campaign like this for L'Oreal? No. No, 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 no. We've never seen L'Oreal do anything like this. Um, and Ellen came in and just like totally turned it on upside down on its head. But it's absolutely beautiful. I had to put this in there because I was like, what? This is L'Oreal? Are you kidding me? No way. So it wasn't an ad campaign that they ran in, ran in magazines. Uh, L'Oreal for sure. I know. Shocking. And this is what can be done for brands when you bring in authentic vision and when you let the models explore or your subjects explore and when you push those boundaries and you let everybody own everything. It doesn't have to be like, you know, like, right? It, it came out much more than that. So, yeah, you guys, it, it's just an example of how, Things don't have to be the way that we think that they should be. We can step outside of the box. <clears throat> and L'Oreal hired her because they knew no other photographer was going to shoot their products the way that Ellen was going to do it. And I'll be damned if she didn't absolutely deliver. And again, some more of Ellen's styling. This is just incredibly iconic. You see an image like this. You see some soft focus, some motion blur. You see a chick being badass. You see the sunnies. You see the like Bardo-esque kind of look. And you're like, okay, yeah, that's that's Ellen's work. Like, I mean, it is she like her styling is just so, you know, it's her work. I mean, you just know it's her work. Okay, so now we're going to talk about Joy de Vivre. Um, this is another one of Ellen's beautiful images. Um, and we are going to talk about the life and excitement that she brings into her work. So Joy de Vivre is act actually the, the translation is enjoy of life. Um, if this picture doesn't summarize that, I don't know what the hell does. I any more fun? Could this be <laughs> any more bananas? It's so amazing. Um, the smile and joy on her face. They're literally up on like four. I read the story about this image years ago. They were on the fourth story and she's like, okay, I want you to bend over the railing and just play and have some fun. And this model just went freaking bananas and like literally threw herself over the like railing and grabbed on and held. good Lord, she could have totally fell off. The other one's like, I think I'm gonna play a little bit safer. But I, this is what Ellen actually inspires in people. And the like, hey, look at my cute panties. Like, and I'm not ashamed of them. Look how cute my bum and my panties are. Aren't I darling? Like, don't you want this? Aren't I amazing? And like, just the joy for life and fun in it is so good. Again, things that we can like, okay, let's file that in the back of our head. And remember that when we're working, it doesn't have to be so stodgy. 
we can actually enjoy life and, and we can be free of all of that shame and fun. Ellen really has like blazed a path in fashion photography um, that we can be inspired by. Some more of that joy for life. We've got three girls here sitting on a, you know, sitting on a curb, legs wide open, completely like, I'll give a shit what you think if you're seeing my panties. Like, go ahead and look. All right, cute. Eating peaches. The name of the photo is peaches. And it's just absolutely amazing. And it's more like exuberant enjoyment of life. They're like eating peaches. Like, I don't know, does it get much better than eating peaches in a pair of thigh high stockings in a gorgeous dress, fully hair and makeup, like sitting on a curb with your girlfriends, some runs in your stockings and people, you know, walking by like, what's that going on? Right. This is exuberance, enjoyment of life. And, and we can do that in our work. Here we have like a champagne tower where we're pouring into it and we're drinking it so much fun in the champagne glass. She just creates this feel of like so much fun. Um, yeah, full on experience life, life with complete exuberance. I love this top image. I love how we have the male model just like, Ooh, and all the girls are like, oh yeah, getting in on this. This is fun. Um, I think sometimes we forget to bring that fun to our work and it's okay to do it um again we have some more exuberant life living everybody's at this gorgeous like party and it's getting wild and we're having a good time we've got a kissing booth i'm pretty sure in this image i didn't do the research but i'm almost 100 positive that the couple on the right is actually linda evangelista i don't know how many of you know who she is she was a supermodel from the 90s um that ellen had quite the love affair with they shot quite a bit and kyle mclaughlin um ellen or uh, uh, Linda Evangelista and Kyle McLaughlin dated for a uh, quite long time. And that really does look like, like Linda Evangelista and Kyle McLaughlin to me, but just the whole idea of this, like darling, like kissing booth, like stop. It's so good. The kind of things that like, you know, because of the society and the environment and the client that we, the climate that we live in today would be considered like, ugh. Ugh. God, enough of all of that. Like, it's okay to be a woman. It's okay to embrace your femininity. And, and there's nothing wrong with it. There is nothing wrong with it. Okay, let me don't get into the politics of this. Look, Denise is going to keep going. Did I shock you? Did I just shock you with this image? If I did, I, I'm glad that I did. Um, it is more exuberant. It's another example of Ellen letting women like own their femininity and sexuality and not being ashamed of it, like totally leaning into it and having fun with it in both of these images. And yes, those were the days, but they can still be the days. They're, we get to make our days. Nobody gets to tell us um, more beautiful, exuberant living. And we see more of Ellen's gorgeous thing in her. Her colors, you guys, her colors are crazy. Um, but the styling is so beautiful too. And it's also just like this fun, exuberant living, the enjoyment of life, <sighs> which is a really big part of why we're here. And I think we get so stuck in the grind that we forget that. And I think Ellen's work can remind us of that. And I think being artists and being creatives, it's kind of our job in the world to remind other people of that as well. Okay. So now we're going to, someone said so many drugs. I don't know if there are a lot of drugs involved. I can't speak to that. Um, but we're going to talk about motion blur. So, Ellen is a master of this. And I know this particular image, I've actually read about this image and it's one of Ellen's favorite images. As so she says, and she said it was a, I think it was like a Czech model 
uh, Eastern European model and she worked and it's literally called the ghost. Uh, the image is called the ghost and she worked with the model um, loved the image and then like you know the model just kind of disappeared off the face of the earth and I don't think Ellen ever had contact with her again um, and wanted to find her because wanted to share it with her but oof. and this is an example of some of the stuff that Ellen does it's more like cabaret looking and more kind of 20s looking and um, it is Ellen does a lot of this as well and I think that's because of her upbringing in Germany um, and, you know, going to, going to cabarets, um, which are not as popular here as they are in Germany. Um, but just, wow, you guys, this image is so haunting and so beautiful. And it really is because of the motion blur. And okay, you guys are probably right about the drugs. It was the eighties and the nineties. So I'm going to go ahead and yeah. Okay. Um, but more than that, moving past that, it really is about connecting and and capturing humanity and the beautiful aspects of humanity. So, oh, Brad, someone just got a lens baby. Kaylee got a lens baby. That's awesome. Um, you know, motion blur is really like it's something you can play around with that is a lot of fun. And we can use it to work intentionally to create more of a motive feel in our work. And it really is just lowering your shutter speed, like just take that shutter speed down and, and experiment with it. So Ellen, um, she really was a pioneer of motion blur in fashion photography. Um, and I've honestly never seen anyone utilize this skill so effectively. Um, Ellen has a lot of critics as as big as she is um, and as much as she has done for women and for the industry and how much trailblazing she's done there are a lot of you know those classical photographers who are like it's not in focus there's blur it was an intentional blur and to be perfectly honest reading interviews with Ellen it's not always intentional blur or soft focus sometimes she just gets really excited about an image and she just shoots and she might not get her focus right. And she's like, ah, I don't care because it adds so much feel to my work. And there are a lot of people who really do criticize her for, for the motion blur and for the lack of focus. There's a lot of soft focus stuff in her work. Um, in my opinion, it adds so much of an emotive feel to her work. And it's what made me become obsessed with motion blur. I mean, you guys know how much. Much. I love motion blur. It's one of my favorite things. Um, so Ellen's slow shutter speeds many times allow the facial features of the subject to be blurred and smeared kind of across the frame, giving a sense of motion and liveliness to her work. It really does add an additional element. Now, this image in particular, I believe it's either Kate Moss or Vanessa Parody. I'm not 100% sure. Both dated Johnny Depp. But anyway, um, they kind of look alike too. I kind of, I always thought it was Vanessa Parody, but as I'm looking at it, I'm almost thinking it's Kate Moss. But the motion blur coupled with like the extreme like pleasure and emotive state that she's in just takes this image to like levels that are like bonkers. It's like what? Like, oh my God, it's so incredibly good. And you feel like you're in the moment with her. It just pulls you in. You have no choice but to be like completely captivated by it. And if you're looking at it and you're like, no, I'm not captivated by it, um, let me know. Someone asked, do we get to learn more about motion blur and strip down? We're going to learn a little bit more about motion blur and strip down for sure. And yeah, everybody has critics, even the best of the best. And nope, Ellen has not left anyone stop her she does what she wants to do she's like you either like my work or you don't period don't care i'm getting paid and i'm doing what i love to do um an attitude some of us should be taking on um in this image it really does kind of like distort the image but i don't even care it still makes me feel um i'm not getting enough emotion in her face for me personally but I'm okay with it because I feel like I'm in the moment with her as she's moving. Um, I 
feel like I'm there. That motion blur makes me feel like I'm in that moment with her, moving with her. It 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 does this thing in my brain. It creates a tremendous amount of like empathetic feeling. And I don't mean empathetic, like, oh, I'm sorry for you. I mean empathetic, like I'm relating to what it is that she's doing. Um, and it really adds a connection to the images for me personally. Um, some more beautiful motion blur by Ellen. I mean, am I wrong or is it not like, oh shit, I can't not look at this. It's so gorgeous. Let me know in the comments. It's just, oh man, it's so beautiful. Tell me what you guys think of motion. Do you guys experiment with it? Do you like it? Yeah. Oh my God. Amazeballs for sure. Are we being shy and typing? Come on, y'all. Interact with me. How many of you experiment with emotion blur in your work? Um, and how many of you want to? Like, how many of you think it's beautiful? Like, does this work move you? I know that it moves me. So someone says not enough and I want to try more. Okay, for that person person who's not enough, I want to try more. And your next couple of shoots, your clients don't even have to see the images. Just take your shutter speed way down, way, way, way down. Um, and shoot. I actually take my camera up and I'll like shoot and I'll, and I'll like mm, do like a little jiggle as well. Mm -hmm. And I'll have my client move a little bit as well. And it's kind of hit and miss. Like, but when you get it, holy shit, it's so good. Um, so, okay, you guys are on about motion blur. You like it as much as I do. That's rad. That's really good. It, and I don't know if you're recognizing it consciously, but subconsciously, it really is adding emotive feels. Um So oh, someone's got to go. Bye. Have a good day. Catch you on the replay. Someone's telling me they love motion blur, trying to get better at using at it. I'm just going to let you know, it's not an exact science. It's just kind of, it's hit and miss, but the more you practice it, the better you'll get, but you still, it's hit and miss. Like I'll take like, you know, 30 images, right? And maybe three of them will come out. Okay. <laughs> this is the nature of motion blur. I've not completely like mastered it. I don't know if I ever will I keep trying, but I'll be happy with the three images that I get out of the 30. Um, Adriana's grading papers. Okay. Um, some of my favorite photos I've taken are whoopsies and their motion plus freaking rad. I feel there's such an emphasis on sharp that we lose motion nowadays. Tiffany, I totally agree with you. And that motion really makes you feel like you're in the moment with it. Um, Wanda's tried, but she wants to try more. Just lower that shutter speed client move a little bit and move a little bit yourself and look at there just play with it um i love motion blur it's beautiful and playful michelle i want to explore motion blur i'm so new explore it it's fun um another person is saying it's beautiful adriana i do experiment with motion blur motion blur i love it but i still have a long way to go baby we all do it's okay that's why it's it's called a growth journey. You're exactly where you're supposed to be. And the fact that you're trying it means you are a badass and you are on a growth journey. You should be proud of yourself. Um, another person says, I love it. And I would love to try it more often. Get at it. Have fun. Have fun with it. Um, someone says, Ellen Von Unworth is absolutely gorgeous and icon and same. She's a big idol in my photography. That's rad. Um, and Amber loves this image. Um, hey, could we do a motion blur post later? Yes, that's a great idea. Adriana, that's fucking brilliant. Oh, pardon my language. That's brilliant. Um, Lee, if you're on with me, can you make a mo note of that, that we get up a motion blur? We'll give, we'll give you guys like four weeks to do that. And we'll put something up in like four weeks where we can all post our motion blur images. I love these and I've never tried motion blur. I'm working on my selfies for class today. Maybe I'll experiment a bit with that. Lori, that's a great idea. Um, blushing, motion blur gives more of a film look to me, which I'm obsessed with. I hate that super tack sharp digital look. This is true. Um, I did a shoot and was about to 
was about 2.0 and missed focus, but beautiful blur. That's rad. So that's going to be a little bit more so soft focus. They're kind of hard to distinguish a little bit, but they do kind of give the same feel. And I loved it. And so did the client. That's awesome. And it was black and white and it just had all the feels. Yep. They add additional emotive elements to it. Um, okay, cool. So Lee is going to go ahead and make a note of that. Okay. So let's keep going because there's way more awesome motion blur to look at. You guys, are you kidding me right now? Like just stop. It is. Um, so we're kind of tight here, but you can see the motion here and the motion here that makes you feel like you're in it with her. This is just all motion. I think Ellen got excited and just like grabbed shot. Like they were walking and she's like, oh my God, I just have to get this shot. Um, there's another one where we've got like the motion blur. She's moving and you feel like you're moving with her. You feel like you're running through the garden with her and it's gorgeous. Okay. So by most standards, the face should always be in focus as it's the primary focal point. That's what we're taught. I mean, that is what we are taught. And, you know, I guess we, you have to learn the rules in order to break them. But there's so many things that we're not taught. And, and that's what I'm hoping to to bring to the community. I am hoping to bring community the things that we are not taught, the things that are so important that are left out of our ed education if we have, you know, formal education in photography. And if we don't have formal education in photography, I really want to bring those things. So Ellen's really just maxim on its head by keeping the frame in focus but with shutter speed slow enough, like 1 60th of a second or greater that allow her subject's face to kind of blur and everything to blur. And utilizing motion blur helps add additional emotive elements to her work and to our work as well. And when we look at her work, it feels as if we're watching the movement from one second to the next, telling us we're there. So we actually empathize, empathize and feel with them. That's the way the human brain works. If you take strip down, you learn all about this. Um, and the way she utilizes motion blur ranges from being very subtle to actually being overpowering, but it's always beautiful and never at the expense of the story she's telling and the emotion that she's conveying. Like, it's never done just to be done. It it adds an additional element. It's like never at the expense of what it is that's going on, which I think is another reason I love it so much. You know, Amber, that's a good question. Um, Amber said, I wonder who Ellen studied as an artist, like uh, as an artist, like we study her. Um, I think Ellen had a life of experiences working with models, being shot, um, living in a bohemian community, being around a bunch of other artists and creatives who weren't necessarily photographers, but were who, you know, makeup artists, set designers, uh, fashion designers, um, traditional artists. Like, you got to remember, at the age of 18, she was picked up to be a model and prior to that, at the age of like 16 or 17, she went and lived in a hippie commune with a bunch of artists. And I mean, her whole life really has been like this bohemian story. Um, I'm sure she's very well versed in heart history. And I imagine if you do a Google search, you can probably find like Ellen's favorite artist. Ellen really broke the rules and kind of created her own space in storytelling and the creation of art. Yeah, Amber, her whole life really was art. Um, I'm not going to lie. I'm a little bit envious. I'm like, I had a kid at 20 and then I started adulting. <laughs> like, love my daughter. Um, would love to go to Bohemia land though. Okay. So we have some more motion blur, which is just fantastic. Um, oh, we've got someone saying that she studied Helmut Newton. And that's true, actually. You know what? I did read that, and I am i can't believe I forgot it. So one of the things that she really liked about Newton's work was that um, the way that he portrayed um, eroticism. Um, 
But one of the things that she wanted to do was give the women in her, her subjects, the women that she shot and her subjects power and control over their femininity, as opposed to like holding still and let me capture like this erotic photo of you. Um, she really wanted to give them a lot of these, a lot of the subjects that we're seeing, we can see, I'm pretty sure that's Naomi Campbell in the back. Um, and this is, uh, oh my God, what is her name? I always forget her name. She's one of my favorite models. Um, she's another very famous model from the nineties. Um, they always had to be hair in place, pristine, doing exactly, you know, what's being asked of them. And one of the things that Ellen did for them was allow them the freedom of self-expression. Hey, have we not been talking about that in regards to boudoir photography? Is that like not one of the most important things that we need to be able to like bring out in our clients? Maybe, I don't know. There might be a reason I'm showing you guys Ellen's work. Um, so she did study helmet, but she also wanted to give the models for expressive expression and freedom in that expression to be able to move to be able to play to be able to have fun to be able to embrace um without being told exactly how to be crafted again another beautiful image of motion blur you guys how many of you i would just love to walk around with this makeup look all the time doesn't suit me if it did, I would wear it constantly. Um, yeah. So another Facebook user said model Claudia Schiffer, maybe um, reading a Wikipedia article. So Claudia was definitely someone that um, Ellen was inspired by. Um, it's what got her into the guest campaign and continued her in the guest campaign for a long time. Um, I think Claudia was definitely one of her muses and they worked beautifully, beautifully together. Although you'll, if you do go and look at Ellen's work, you'll see that her, that her editorial work, her fashion campaigns are so divergent from like her personal work, the stuff that she does for books, um, uh, and, uh, personal projects. There's a big difference. Um, there's still that aspect of like, you know, controlling, um, having freedom of expression, um, lack of shame, total acceptance of self. Um, but there's a lot more eroticism in her, in her work that you see in her books and in exhibits and personal projects. So that's something you should check out. Um, oh, Adriana said she used to wear her eyes that bold as a teenager. It is a very captivating look. And here we have her capturing, uh, capturing Adriana Lima. Again, we see that beautiful motion blur that adds like so much to the image. And I mean, we don't see like a ton of like, you know, trailing or anything, but we can see that motion blur here in the face. It's just, it's gorgeous. Um, Andrea says, I guess I'll be the weird one in the group here and admit that the inner perfectionist in me has a hard time with things like motion blur in my work. But I do love what I feel when things like blur help tell the narrative in images like these. But I don't think that's weird. I think I think that we get taught, you know, certain ways to work. And some of us are perfectionists and we want things, every, everything really clean and crisp. And it's a personal style preference and there's nothing wrong wrong with that at all my love um your style is your style you're never meant to completely somebody else um you're meant to be yourself and explore and grow and be inspired by and take things that you're inspired by from others and make them your own so you're not weird um you're self-aware and that's a beautiful thing We've got more awesome, awesome motion blur. And to me, this image like just creates like a sense of urgency. There's like some kind of sense of urgency in this. Like, we oh, have to hurry up and grab this. Like this moment's going to, like, it's just going to be a moment. It's going to go away. And, and and I need to have it now. And, and I just, I love it. I personally love it. Okay. So now we're going to talk soft focus. Um, oh no. What happened here? Uh-oh. Let's go back. The image isn't loading. Come on. Oh, 
I'm sorry, guys. The image is not loading. I don't know why it's doing that. So the soft focus technique is a way of photographing things so that so so that the edges of objects in the photograph are relatively not sharp and clear. And the soft focus technique is used for reducing the local contrast in an image and also adding kind of a dreamy glow. Um, so Sarah Moon was a master of the soft focus and a lot of her stuff was like really dreamy. You guys, I'm going to actually hit escape here really quick and try that again and see if it doesn't show up now sorry about that guys yeah okay well the image doesn't want to show up it's unfortunate it was a beautiful image of christy tarlington um from ellen's early days and i think it's when she started experimenting with soft focus and it's just absolutely gorgeous we have another one here that's incredibly dreamy. To me, this is very reminiscent of Sarah Moon. Um, if you guys don't know who she is, um, maybe we can talk about her at another time. Her women were just very dreamlike, very surrealistic, very beautiful. Lots of just like soft focus, dreamy, beautiful stuff. And uh, it, it does add additional emotive elements. And don't ever think that any of this is by accident. This is all done very intentionally. Um, we've got kind of like a little bit of vulnerability happening in here. We've got like the open neck. We've got the hands up, the shoulders like tucked into the tucked into the body, the chin down, the shoulder closer up to the ear. Um, this image is a little bit vulnerable. Um, and the soft focus just adds to that dreamy feel of it. Oh my goodness. This is making me angry. Why isn't it showing up? Try again. Okay. You guys are just going to have to see it from my Canva account. Sorry, kids. I'm going to shut that. And I'm going to reload. Bear with me, y'all. If you can't tell, I just, just put a little bit of work into this. And our images aren't loading. And that is sucking. What I'll do is I, I will... There we go. Okay. So we've got this beautiful image of Chrissy Tarlington. I'm going to go back to present. And hope that it's working now. Thank you for being patient with me. Okay, there we go. So the soft focus focusing is a way of photographing things so that the edges of the objects in the photograph are relatively not sharp or clear. And the soft focus technique is used for reducing the local contrast in an image and also for adding a kind of dreamy glow. And we're definitely getting that here. We've got some more vulnerability in this and a little bit of longing. And the soft focus nature of this photo really, really adds to that, that those elements. We have this image. We've got some more beautiful soft focus images. And you can go do a search on her work and you will find a ton of gorgeous soft focus images. Her subject matter is always so unconventional and just so gorgeous. It's beautiful. I love it. Another really beautiful soft focus image that pulls us in. What an apropos candle flame, huh? Thanks for that. <laughs> I was like, yay, I could show it on Facebook. <laughs> oh, we live in such a puritanical society, y'all. Okay, so now I want to talk about some of the books that were created by Ellen in case you all want to do more um, research. Um, a lot of the personal work that is like really like Ellen's vision, 
Ellen's work, not things that she, she's creating for campaigns, which still have like huge elements of who she is, but her just, Ellen just being Ellen, um, you find in a lot of her books. Um, I'm sad to say that I don't have all of her books. Um, I'm hoping by the end of the year, I will own all of the books. There are two more that I'm trying to get my hands on. Um, it's not easy. Some of them are, um, some of them not so much. Um, so some of the books um, that you, you can pick up from Ellen and be prepared to drop a pretty penny are Snaps. And um, this is, I think this is her first book. Um, and I'm dying to get my hands on this. It's incredibly expensive though. Um, Couples is another one of her books. And I actually have that. It's pretty easy to get on Amazon. Um, Wicked is another one of her books. Um I don't know how to say that name. Omahara and Boyd. Um, I don't have that. So I'm looking to get it. The story of Olga is beautiful. Devotion is a hard one to get your hands on, but a beautiful book. Revenge. Fraulein is, it's a really, really, really beautiful book that has a tremendous amount. It's huge. It has a tremendous amount of her personal work in it and it's fantastic i would suggest anyone who's interested in ellen's work pick it up and you can get it on uh, uh, amazon and then hi Matt, um which is the one that i'm actively pursuing right now um because i'm obsessed with it and so you can see some of the covers we've got the story of olga we've got wicked we've got ellen von unworth couples and we've got, got devotion, revenge, and Fraulein. What I want to bring up about Ellen is that she has always um, pushed the boundary, boundaries of stereotypical gender roles. She's never been afraid to show um, sexuality between women. She's never been afraid to show sexuality between women and men. She's never been afraid to depict sexuality between men. And she was well ahead of her time in doing this. Um, she was creating this kind of work when no one else was, when it was still really kind of taboo. Um, and I really appreciate her doing that and for normalizing that and not making it such a taboo subject, at least in her world and the world I experienced um, having these books. I've had this book, Couples, for a really long time. <clears throat> I think as soon as it came out, I got it. Um, and I've always seen her work, her pushing those boundaries and saying like, love is love and sex is sex and really pushing the stereotypical gender roles and assignments for sexuality and how we're supposed to behave and not behave and and just like smashing down through the taboos and so you do see a lot of that in Ellen's work and it's not something that like she's jumped on the bandwagon recently like oh gosh I better shoot a same-sex couple for my portfolio that's not how it worked like so I can have some diversity like she truly was a pioneer in doing this and so going back and revisiting some of that work by Ellen I think is fantastic because we can see it being done in a real authentic and and beautiful way. Um, another one of the reasons I love this woman so very much, she just takes the taboo out of and normalizes human connection and interaction and the beauty of the human condition just so gorgeously. It's, it's so good. So these are all good books that you can check out. Um, I'm going to just look at the comments really quick. Um, yeah, someone really loves the candle one. So Heimat is a home in German um, in the sense of where you're from. Oh, that's interesting. That's nice to know. Maybe Ellen is why I ended up bisexual. She helped me see sexuality wasn't um, normal for me. Amber, growing up in San Francisco. Yeah, and, and it's important that we have voices like that in the community that... Um, really break through those taboos and normalize it and not with like an agenda, but in a really authentic and beautiful way. 
So I wanted to pull this book. It was one of the only books where I can find some of like the gorgeous work. Um, and isn't it beautiful? I didn't know that Haima is home from it. So yeah. And, uh, you know, Ellen is obviously from, from Germany. Um, and she is German born. Um, so Toshin published this book and I was able to find some images that were in the book that I wanted to share with you guys that I thought were phenomenal. Mm. This, are you kidding me? Like get it girls. Oh yeah. So beautiful. And, and the closeness and the intimacy in this image it's just, God, you guys, it's just gorgeous. It really, mm, so moving. And the three darling girls being very coy and flirtatious. And then, hi, got milk? Are you kidding me? <laughs> it's such an incredibly good, just amazing image. It It pushes all the boundaries. It does all the good stuff. It's like, unapologetic. It's a real, good, it's a real true life stuff, guys. It's, it's good. And to see a fashion photographer doing things like this is like wonderful. And we shouldn't be afraid to like try things like this ourselves, like push our own boundaries. Okay. So that is the end of the presentation on Ellen. And I hope that I've been able to share some like awesome work of hers with you that has inspired you to like go and look even further um and maybe kind of get to a place where you feel i'm gonna stop sharing so i can just talk to you guys um give me one second okay maybe it'll help you guys get to a place we can we can move past a lot of those taboos and understand that there is, there shouldn't be any shame in what it is we do as boudoir photographers. There shouldn't be any shame in sexuality, um, whether it be heterosexuality, homosexuality, bisexuality, um, that creating, you know, using different techniques to get more emotion in our work is a beautiful thing to do and something that we can use in our growth journey. And just to really underscore the importance of strip down and taking that course, how incredibly important it is to work with precision and intention. And, you know, Ellen, Ellen is lucky. Ellen was a model. Um, Ellen, knows and understands all of the different emotive seats because she had to be able to deliver those to clients. And so she's able to, and she's also very lucky because she gets to work with models. She's not working with consumer clients who are coming in. So it's a little bit easier to get there. It's not going to be that easy for all of us who have consumer clients that are coming in. Um, but there is stripped down that will help you get there. We're going to be launching again in this late spring, early summer. So if you're not signed up, um, you should be watching this space for that because we're going to do it. Um, but to also just be incredibly inspired by the beautiful things that she's done and know the beautiful things that we can do. Again, we don't have her budget. We're not working with professional models. We need to be realistic. We don't have those kind of stylists on set. We don't have those kind of production budgets. We don't have those kind of locations. Are we going to produce work that is exactly like Ellen's? Absolutely not in most cases. But can we take elements from it and be inspired by it and grow from it? Absolutely. freaking -lutely. And so I really hope that that today's exploration of, of this particular phenomenal artist who I respect and admire with all of my heart for the beautiful things that she's done in this space and the beautiful things that she's done for the people that she's worked with and just the beautiful things that she's put out in the world. I hope that it's inspired you as well. Um, and I hope to keep bringing you inspiration on a weekly basis and be part of your growth journey uh, where we can all level up and raise this industry to a place where 
the shame goes away and the awkward not understanding how to get our clients there and and the experiences that might be a little bit lacking and and then all of those feelings we have ourselves is like being imposters because we have this like intuition of underdeveloped skills like let's develop those skills let's grow together let's do this shit so i'm here for it um i see that there are some of you that are here for it as well um i would love for you guys to share if you have any friends that aren't with us on coffee talks um i would love for you guys to share to bring them as well the more people that i can reach the sooner the industry is going to get better um the less we're going to be like the red headed stepchild and the more serious and the better experiences we'll be able to provide for our clients and the better we're going to feel about ourselves as artists and we're going to be able to step into our true authenticity as that i think a part of that is exploration of other people's art and other art in general and important conversations so before i hop off <clears throat> i know this has been a long one sorry guys um does anybody have any questions questions for me that I can answer today. I would love to chat with you all about anything or any comments about this. Um, let's see. Love the talk today. So eye-opening. Thank you, Amber. Um, let's see. This was awesome. Excited to try some new things. Rat. Um, it fits so well with the course. Yeah, thank you, Lisa. Um, and then another one, Ellen, and you have inspired me today. I greatly appreciate that. I like, I mean, like my name in with Ellen's is like kind of bananas. Um, does anybody have any questions that I can answer for you? Take a sip of my tea while I'm waiting. Do I drink the biggest glasses of tea ever? I think I do. Okay. It looks like you're all good. I'm not seeing any questions coming through. I hope that every single one of you has a absolutely beautiful and wonderful, wonderful day. Um, I've been spending my morning with you. I'm very humbled that you're all taking your incredibly precious time to that's a very big deal. And I'm very honored that you're doing that. I'm going to do my best to keep bringing you a tremendous amount of value. Um, here in the free group and with the stripped down online course, as well as the in-person courses. Um, and I am going to see you again next week. So until then, embrace your femininity, embrace your sexuality, um, let go of the shame and keep going down your growth journey and stay here so that I can be a part of it. I like being a part of it. Okay. Okay. Bye, everybody. Have a wonderful day. Go do beautiful things in the world. That's what you need to do. You need to go do beautiful things in the world today. Bye, y'all.